Hello there. It's an unusual day for me to hop in live today, but I didn't get to hop in yesterday, Friday, the normal time that I do. And um, today is Saturday, and I just got out of day one of our Neuropracticity 4.0 course, and I was so excited to share some of the little nuggets that Mike Studer shared today. So if we haven't met, my name is Julie Hirschberg. I'm the owner, founder of Reactive Therapy and Wellness here in the Los Angeles area. And I uh, was able to host a course for the amazing Mike Studer today. We've done this um, four times. It's Neuropracticity 4.0. We hosted the course today with an amazing group of people from across the country. Uh, and I was just so excited as I was taking notes today. I was like, I've got to be able to share some of this uh, with everybody else. So I hop on every week to share a bit of, of a bit about what we are learning and doing and today it was all about neuropracticity and what does that word even mean it, it really means those things that we can do in practice to promote neuroplasticity or those brain changes so i want to hit on uh neuroplasticity principles and particularly the five new principles that Mike introduced today. Also talk about some applications for engagement um, and having engagement in therapy. And then finally, Mike had several live patients join us today, which was awesome. And I just wanted to share one of those cases that um, somebody shared, that the person came on and Mike's use of the optimal theory through that case. So first, neuroplasticity principles. I've talked about the 10 top principles before. It's from this really seminal review article by Jones and Klein from 2008. So it did deserve an update and Mike really updated it today. But let me hit on the 10 and then add in Mike. So, and Mike talked about all of these. So the idea of use it or lose it. Um, so if you don't drive a specific brain function, you can actually lose some of that. Use it or improve it. There's specificity of training. Repetition matters. Intensity matters. Time matters. So different forms of plasticity occur at different times during training. Salience matters. Age matters. Transference matters. And there's there can actually be interference. So Mike suggested these next five tips, um, or not tips, principles of neuroplasticity that I think are hugely important. And basically what this course is about too are, are some of these big tips. Um, engagement matters. So not just is this salient to the person, but how compelling is the challenge for this person? And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about this engagement in, this, in the second piece from today. So engagement matters, sleep matters. Now, this was not a course on sleep, but we do understand the role of sleep in uh, consolidating motor learning, for example, and hey, we're all gonna lose an hour tonight with daylight savings time. So I'm already thinking about this, like how am I going to make up that extra sleep? So um, engagement matters, sleep matters. 13, love this one, automaticity matters. So allocating full attention, particularly to movement can impair uh, learning and procedural memory formation and tolerance for dual task. So how much can we move um, movement into the background, as Mike often says, and have it be very automatic? Um, and how can many of our, of our tasks become automatic? Uh, number four, context beyond just specificity matters. So we must really set up or program our rehab around tasks and context, environments and situations. We have to think of all the ecological demands. And then finally, number five that Mike added here was individual individuality matters. 
So big principles are for population. Personalization is for people. I really, really love that uh, idea. And one of the things that Mike does so well is innovate um, some of these principles for the person in front of them. So, so very powerful. So those were the five new principles of neuroplasticity. One of those was engagement. And he shared this quote that I really love, and it was behind every diagnosis, a person is waiting to be heard. I thought that was just so lovely. And um, one of the areas that this really gets at is how engaged we are and the person is uh, with, with the process of rehabilitation. So he gave some key principles of engagement. I just thought these were spot on. So this is simple. Uh, be on time. Make eye contact it, as the person prefers or not. Frame the expectations. Um, ask for help before and, and frame something. And, and Mike does this really well. But uh, when you're getting to know somebody, I know being trained in the medical like field, we often want to know, like, when's your diagnosis? When was it? Like, ask all of the questions. And Mike really challenged us to say before, before I learn about your condition, I want to know about you as the person. This is how we promote engagement. Ask for permission. Reframe things and uh, demonstrate active listening that you've shown understanding. Inform with expertise, but listen with skill. State your accountability and the value proposition. I really like that one too. Ask and listen for feedback and input from the person. So these were principles that we can use. Now remember, Neuropracticity 4.0 was called the secret of the soft skills. So this is all about our ability to listen and connect and engage with a person. So these principles of engagement were pretty important. Um, okay, so those were the first two. I wanted to hit on those like five new principles of neuroplasticity dive into some of those ideas with engagement and how we can promote engagement. And then I wanted to talk about uh, a patient that Mike worked with uh, one of our therapists, Brittany, with. And this was an uh, older gentleman with peripheral neuropathy who um, has some stairs in front of his house, some steps that are kind of inclined, and he had a fear of falling on that incline. And um, Mike, by the way, in all of the courses that we've done, we, he's, we've always had the opportunity for mentoring. So somebody can come bring a, a patient and work together with Mike. It's really, uh, it's really awesome. And I think not something that's often seen in, in courses. Um, what, what Mike was really demonstrating in this particular time was those areas of engagement. He, um, this particular person uh, was really creative, a creative writer, um, and he has had a sensory loss and a peripheral neuropathy. And Mike um, set up with Brittany um, some activities, particularly in this case. So remember the the difficulty was with uh, declined surfaces. That's that is really hard for a lot of people. So um, one of the things that Mike kind of reminded us is that just standing still on an incline doesn't train you for moving on an incline because it's static versus dynamic. It trains you for adjusting yourself to an incline, but not for moving on an incline. So Mike did a sit to stand on the incline. This person was at tele on telehealth and at home. So he set that up safely. He gave the person choices. You know, do you want to be near the wall so you could put your hand there? Yes. And um, 
set set him up. This isn't something that the person had done. And what was really neat is that Mike set it up for a moment or an element of surprise. So he he did the task with him, and um, you could hear him go the the patient say, "Wow, I didn't think that I could do that." And that is actually one of the things that Mike talked about in this course is how we can get hits of dopamine um, for our patients. And one of the ways that we can do that is through an element of surprise. Now, for the therapist, that takes a really great skill to understand what level this person might be able to do uh, and be successful at because also that success that moment of unexpected success also can release dopamine. Um, there was some novelty to the task as well. And we talked about novelty as another piece that can um, cause a dopamine hit. And one of the things that was, was really neat is, and Mike is so skillful at this, but he challenges all of us therapists to be thinking this way as well he brought in a beautiful metaphor so remember this person was a writer he brought in this really beautiful wizard of oz metaphor so the the person had identified well i really can't feel my heels and that's why i think the decline is really challenging for me and so mike kind of opened up the store well what else do you have access to? What else can you use for your balance? And he li he linked that to the Wizard of Oz. So after this person was done and completed these things successfully, um, which he didn't realize might happen, right? Um, Mike asked him, like, you know, maybe this is like the Wizard of Oz. Like you have, like you're the Tin Man and you you know you thought you wouldn't have a heart and now you notice that you have this capability and what is that like um so i thought the metaphor particularly was so profound and really linked that to the person and their their interest um and their ability to uh, discover something new about themselves and what Mike was demonstrating so many things, by the way, and this was just like a 15, 20 minute uh, time with a patient um, and a therapist. Uh, but one of the biggest things was this idea of goal action coupling. So I'll leave on this note, um, another really just profound part of our course today, but those things of surprise, novelty and motivation all triggering release of dopamine and if if we can combine those into an intervention um which takes some interviewing really understanding and getting to know the person um we can set up that person to not only have success in that moment but be able to lay down new pathways that's neuroplasticity um so that that's really one of the big take homes from uh from today it's how we can use those neuroplasticity principles and actually put them into practice at, and actually as part of the course practice these things <laughs> and put them together it has been really really awesome so i just had to share with you today um so anyway this is our neuropracticity 4.0 course that we're doing this weekend with mike studer i've been so thankful to have mike as a colleague and friend and be able to share with I think we have 70 therapists in this course. It did actually, our live course sold out. So we've got 40 therapists in our live course and we have 30 therapists who um, are doing it recorded. It is available recorded if, if you're interested in that. But believe me, I'm going to be talking about this for sure for the next few weeks because I always get so excited learning new things and trying new things. And this is like, part of what keeps me, it keeps reactive, really motivated and on our toes and 
in the latest evidence and getting creative and innovative with other therapists is such a big part of what we do. Our whole team is a part of this course. It's really awesome. So um, I hope you found that helpful today. I think these are little things that you can take into practice and immediately make an impact and a difference for the people that you're serving. So thanks so much for joining me today. I will catch you soon and have a great weekend.